The Mount Bundy Gold Project is located approximately 110 kilometers southeast of Darwin in the Northern Territory. The project is located in the Pine Creek region where over 14 million ounces of gold have been discovered to date. Primary is the dominant tenement holder in the northern part of this region as their package is spread across 1,500 square kilometres. Mount Bundy has a current resource of more than 1.2 million ounces of gold which is spread across three deposits. Rustler's Roost, Tom's Gully and Quest 29. A recent change to the board and management team has resulted in a new strategy, as Primary is now focused on the development of a large tonnage operation that incorporates each of the current deposits, as well as aggressively explores the vast yet underexplored exploration package. Now we've just arrived at Mount Bundy, which was approximately a one hour drive from Darwin in the Northern Territory. Whilst here, we're going to take a closer look at the surrounding infrastructure, the deposits and exploration targets that make up Mount Bundy, as well as the potential processing route. So let's go and take a closer look around the project. As the project is located close to an Australian capital city, it is supported by excellent existing infrastructure. This includes water, power and telecommunications, a national highway within a few kilometres of the Tom's Gully deposit, as well as a skilled workforce within driving distance of the project, meaning Mount Bundy will be a drive-in, drive-out operation. Rustler's Roost was mined during the 1990s with just over 100,000 ounces of production. The project has a resource of just under 800,000 ounces of gold, however only limited work has been completed on the project since its closure, as the focus has been on recommencing production at Tom's Gully. Mining at Rustler's Roost will be via a typical open pit method, which involves drill and blast, load and haul. The historical operation was mined to a depth of between 40 to 50 metres. Gold mineralisation starts from the bottom of the pit, meaning limited pre-strip may be required when production recommences. The current pit design goes to a maximum depth of around 200 metres, however remains open. We estimate that the strip ratio will be around 2.5, which is low compared to other Australian open pit operations. Tom's Gully is also a historical operation, originally mined as an open pit, before later being developed into an underground project. There remains a high grade reserve and resource, which has the potential to grow further. There was significant capital spent redeveloping the underground as recently as 2010 which included a new decline and portal, as well as the development of a number of stopes. A feasibility study completed in 2013 estimated $9 million would be required for mining of the underground to recommence. This cost included dewatering, refurbishment and development. In addition to the known deposits at Mount Bundy, there is also a substantial exploration portfolio which has largely been underexplored for much of the past 20 years. Primary, however, has identified a number of highly prospective targets, including a number of gold outcroppings from surface such as these. Primary has identified a number of highly prospective brownfield and greenfield exploration targets that could significantly increase the mine life at Mount Bundy. The majority of these targets have had little to no exploration in the past 20 years. A detailed review of the exploration potential at Rustler's Roost, Tom's Gully, as well as the Greenfield targets can be found at the Sophisticated Investor website. We assume the initial throughput is 3.5 million tonnes per annum, with 90% of the fee coming from Rustler's Roost and 10% from Tom's Gully. This results in a head grade of around 1.8 grams per tonne. The front end processing facility will be the same as any other gold project in Australia, as the ore will first be crushed before being ground in the ball mill. Once ground, the ore will potentially be processed through a Nielsen's concentrator. This is simply a gravity circuit that increases the head grade prior to the leaching process. Historical studies at Mount Bundy have shown that 95% of the gold can be pulled into 25% of the mass. This would decrease both the capital and operating cost for processing. The ore will then pass through the leaching tanks. 
However, instead of carbon being added, Primary will use resins as an alternative, as the ore at Mount Bundy is carbonaceous. In principle, both resin in leach and carbon in leach are analogous. It's a very similar plant, very similar capex and opex uh, requirements for both facilities. The key difference with both carbon and resin processing is that a carbon pellet, uh, carbon is a naturally occurring substance, and it's effectively a, a fluke of nature that the gold cyanide complex will load onto naturally occurring organic carbon. Resins, on the other hand, are a synthetically made product that is designed to target metals or the extraction of metals in solution. In this case, we're looking at gold in gold cyanide complex form. So where you have a, a carbon pellet which has a certain loading efficiency, a certain selectivity, and your, your gold ion in solution has a certain affinity towards loading on carbon, the resin bead is designed to be much stronger and have a much higher affinity for that gold in solution. So gold in solution will be much more attractive to a resin bead over a carbon pellet. Once the resins are removed, the gold is processed into bars by the same methodology as all Australian gold operations, 